Can you tell what ship I'm on just from looking at this mast? It might be a bit tricky. You probably guessed that it's a Cunard ship, but can you tell which one? Is it Queen Victoria or Queen Elizabeth? Perhaps it's Queen Mary II, or maybe even the QE2? Or am I standing on board Queen Anne during her sea trials right now? The reason it's tricky to know is because this mast design is actually shared amongst all of those Cunard ships. The current Cunard fleet share a number of traits in their designs that can be dated back to the 1960s with the introduction of the QE2, this mast being just one of them. So today we're going to have a walk around the Queen Victoria and identify the parts of the ship that have their origins with the QE2. Another feature that the current Cunard ships share with the QE2 is the funnel, one of the most iconic parts of the Cunard design. The funnel colours actually date back to 1840, when they were first applied on board RMS Britannia and her sister ships Caledonia, Acadia and Columbia. The original Cunard funnels were long, thin metallic structures that were painted in a mixture that contained buttermilk. As the funnels heated up, the heat interacted with the buttermilk and turned them a distinctive Cunard red-orange. Couple this with the black expansion joints which formed the black bands and the crew's tendency to paint the top of the funnels black because they used to get dirty and you get the iconic Cunard funnel colours created in 1840. So the funnel colours date back to 1840 but what about the funnel design? Well the funnel design itself actually dates back to QE2 with an innovative design that was first introduced in 1967. The funnel consists of the cowling, the funnel itself, and the scoop. The design enables for the air to be pushed up by the scoop, run over the outside of the funnel cowling, and up over the ventilation shafts to allow for the smoke and soot to be blown away from the aft decks. This design has been shared by all of the modern Cunard queens, except Queen Anne, which doesn't have the scoop. When QE2 first entered service, her funnel was painted white and black, but in the 1980s was returned to the traditional Cunard colours of red and black with the black bands. This is what's carried on aboard all the Cunard ships today. Another place that you'll find elements of the QE2 on board Queen Victoria, but also all of the Cunard ships, is in the artwork. There are paintings of QE2 everywhere, from the Commodore Club to the staircases throughout the ship, to corridors where you go to get to your cabin. You can find hints of QE2 and the iconic Cunard past throughout the ships. The club leader was introduced on board QE2 when she started operating cruisers and it was later renamed the Lido during her 1994 refit. You will find the Lido restaurant also on board Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth but not on Queen Anne or on Queen Mary too. And yes, this is actually how tall I am and this is how low this bulkhead is. They should make these vista classes a little bit higher. This is the Yacht Club on board Queen Victoria. It's had this name since 2017. Before its big refit, it was actually called Hemispheres. But there have been yacht clubs on board Cunard ships since QE2 in 1987. The first yacht club was installed aboard the QE2 during the major re-engineering project in Bremerhaven. And since they have carried yacht clubs on Queen Victoria, but also Queen Elizabeth as well. You might not know this, but the original plans for Queen Mary II also contained a yacht club but when the ship entered service, the nightclub was called G32. The bookshop and the neighbouring library were also signature rooms on board QE2. In fact, the first bookshop went to sea in 1994 after the ship's Project Lifestyle refit. Situated next to the library, these were treasure troves for maritime enthusiasts and people who loved ships, with shelves and shelves of books about ocean liner history on both the library side and the bookshop side. The bookshop tradition has continued on board the current Cunard ships with a bookshop and a library found on Queen Mary II, Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth and a library found on board the new Queen Anne. The chart room also has its origins in 1994 with the QE2's Project Lifestyle refit. It was a refurbishment of the midships bar and it was renamed the chart room with lots of imagery and charts displayed throughout the area. This has continued on board Queen Mary II and Queen Victoria. All four ships of the Cunard fleet have a Queen's Room, and this space also dates back to the era of QE2. The first Queen's Room was found on board QE2 in 1969, and was primarily the first class ballroom. This space was also used as a multi-purpose ballroom for first class and tourist class when the ship went cruising. The Queen Mary II has the largest Queen's Room that's ever been seen on board a Cunard ship, with the largest dance floor at sea. However, there is also a Queen's Room on board Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth, and Queen Anne. 
The Golden Lion was also introduced with Cunard back in 1994, also during QE2's Project Lifestyle refit. The Golden Lion has since been replicated on board Queen Mary 2, Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth, and there will also be one on board Queen Anne. It is Cunard's traditional English pub and is a very popular place for fish and chips and chicken tikka for dinner and lunch. I hope you enjoyed this little step back in memory lane and until next time, I hope to see you on board. Buttermilk, and as the heat of the funnel increased, that were painted with a mix. The original Cunard. Ah! <laughs> Not a script at all. Do we do bloopers in this one, do you think? I guess so. When the ship underwent a refit, it used to be called Hemispheres, and this music is too loud for me to be talking, so you won't be able to hear a word that I'm saying. <laughs>